Good morning, Joshua Harris. Welcome on VH Berries. Thank you so much. It's good to be with you. You are such an intriguing entrepreneur, author, and former pastors. Because of your ideas, commitment, and media coverage, how are you doing these days? I'm doing so well. I'm I'm enjoying life and uh, just grateful to to have good work and interesting people to talk to. Today, Vancouver uh, seems to be a city that helps you to find the answers you need. Oh, I've loved living in Vancouver. You know, I spent most of my life in the United States, but I moved here six years ago. And it's just a place that represents freedom and a new start for me. You know, I, I came here to go to graduate school and it was a wonderful place for me to uh, stop trying to be a leader that had to have all the answers and instead be able to be a student and to learn alongside others. And it really became a place for me to reflect on my life and reflect on my ideas and to change in quite a few ways. And so, you know, in Vancouver, if you, if you ever get to visit, you'll see that the city is nestled between the ocean and the mountains. And so it represents for me just this, this feeling of, of limitless possibilities. I'm telling you this because questions uh, are central to your work of your investigative approach of religion and uh, self-development. Yeah, that's really true. You know, it, it wasn't true for most of my life. Uh, for a lot of my life, I was a part of a very closed kind of religion that didn't ask a lot of questions. In other words, it gave a lot of answers and it said, this is the way you should believe. And we have, you know, a corner on God and on religion and all the other people are wrong. In fact, you have to be careful not interacting with them because they could pollute you and lead you into bad ideas. And so for a lot of my life, I lived like that. I was very fearful. I was afraid to ask questions. I was afraid to interact with people who were different than me. And I went through a lot of challenging moments where I began to see that my way of living and my way of doing things actually did not have all the answers. And I didn't even agree with all the things that, that I had um, upheld for so long. And so now I want to be what you're describing. Um, but uh, in the past, I was not like that. And Joshua Harris, I'm very curious about your early life because I saw that uh, your father was a personality that was very committed to the church and to religions. Yeah, my father, uh, he's a wonderful man and we have a great, great friendship and relationship. Uh, he was a pastor and he also was a very uh, influential speaker and leader in what's called the homeschooling movement in the United States back in the 1980s. And so, um, of course, now with COVID, uh, people all over the world are homeschooling, but homeschooling back then was something that was very radical, something very different where parents chose to pull their kids out of school and educate them at home because they didn't want them to be influenced by secular ideas. And so, um, my father was very much a um, influential leader uh, in that movement. And so, I grew up both in the evangelical church as well as a part of the homeschool tradition. So, if I understood correctly, Joshua Harris, you mean that you were uh, homeschooled yourself because your parents wanted to, uh, in sort of way, uh, to protect you from external influence? That is exactly right. I was homeschooled my entire life, and I didn't um, didn't go to uh, you know elementary school or high school or even college. Instead of, of going to college, I started. Um, writing and producing a magazine and speaking and doing the things that my dad did in terms of uh, traveling across the country doing workshops. And so, yeah, my parents were very much motivated by this, this idea that there are a lot of dangerous um, values or lack of values in the secular world. And so, they wanted to protect me from that. And that led into, I think, a lot of the ideas that were in my, my first book. This is funny you bring this up because a few years ago, uh, you went to the university. So at the end of uh, the story, uh, you've been there. Yes. I mean, it was a, it was a big deal for me to, to go to, uh, this graduate school of theology after never having gone to school <laughs> before in my life. So I felt, uh, I felt a little, um, 
you know, silly at times because everything was, was such a, a different experience, but I, I learned quite a bit through that. So I would really love to retrace uh, the history of your book. So at the end of the last uh, century, you published a book uh, in 1997 called uh, I Kissed Dating Goodbye. And it took me a few minutes to understand the title. And <laughs> I thought it must be a missing word. Am I the only one noticing that? <laughs> I've never, I've never heard that before, but, um, I'm sure that, uh, the English title, I Kiss Dating Goodbye, uh, probably doesn't always translate very well into, into different languages. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a little bit of a, you know, tongue in cheek, as we say, um, in English. You know, it's, it, there's a little bit of a, of a joke to the title. Very smart title. I know this was part of your marketing strategy, uh, from your team and yourself. No, that's exactly right. I mean, um, it was, it was an idea that was very, uh, strange. In, in other words, the idea of not dating was not popular or something that anybody was thinking about. But to, you know, put that into the form of kissing it goodbye, saying goodbye to it kind of caught people's attention and it stuck with people. And the whole idea of the book was basically I was as a young Christian trying to say if if everything that we've been told that we're not supposed to have sex before marriage is is true then we shouldn't even be dating because dating is leading us into premarital sex it's leading us to hurt one another it's leading to distraction and so I kiss dating goodbye was saying we should not be distracted we should not even date other people instead just have friendships and really focus ourselves on preparing to be married people down the road so it's very idealistic Um, it was very radical in its religious idealism, uh, and it caught on. A lot of people, I think, were frustrated with dating. They bought into this idea, um, but, but sadly, I think it led to some negative consequences years later. That's right, because with these very strong messages that you wanted to share uh, with the world, you sold over 1.2 millions of copies. Yeah, it was, uh, it was an international bestseller and it was translated into many different languages. Um, and I think it was because there was a lot of a fear. There were a lot of parents who didn't want their kids to date the way they had or to make the mistakes that they had made. There was a lot happening in the United States around topics like um, being anti-abortion. Um, AIDS was something that people were very scared of. And so, in that fear, people were wanting to do things differently. Not that, you know, it, it's very similar, I would say, to my parents saying, let's pull our kids out of school so that we protect them from these bad influences. In the same way, there was this idea of let's pull our kids out of dating so that they can have stronger marriages, so that they can do things differently than the rest of the world. That's very interesting because these 20 last years, I believe that our society has evolved Uh, very fast and very quickly. And I don't believe that uh, if you have published your book today in 2021, it would have uh, the same impact. No, I mean, that's exactly right. The world has changed in, in so many ways. And I mean, I think that's true of, of any cultural moment or any trend that it doesn't necessarily translate to another point in history in the same way. So basically, Joshua Harris, uh, let's say that we are in uh, 1997. You just published your book. What happened? What happened in terms of the response to the book? Is that what you mean? Exactly. The reception from the audiences, yeah. the press. Yeah, well, you know, like you pointed out, the, the title of the book was very catchy. It was an interesting <laughs> idea. And so a lot of people started talking about it. Um, the people who read my magazine or had gone to my conferences... Uh, bought the cop copies of the book, gave them to the people in their church. Pastors bought the book, gave them to their students. Parents bought the book and it just began to spread. I did a lot of um, media interviews with newspapers and some television shows and things like that. And it really just began to, to snowball. You know, the, the power of an idea it can become, you know, like we say, something goes viral today on the internet. Uh, that's always been the case in human history. Ideas go viral and they can influence a lot of people. And, um, you know, a lot of times that happens so quickly that people don't think through all of the implications of an idea. 
Joshua Harris, you just mentioned the snowball, which is very interesting because your book was published on January 1st. It was in winter. <laughs> yeah, I never, I never thought about that. But um, yeah, it really did pick up a lot of momentum and was embraced by a lot of people. And what's happened is now as people are looking back on the late 1990s and early 2000s in the evangelical Christian world, They, they call what was happening at that time the purity movement. And the purity movement really is all about emphasizing sexual purity, not having sex, the importance of virginity. And this was something that was happening in families. It was something that was happening in churches. And, uh, there was just so much emphasis on this that it ended up really negatively affecting a lot of people where they were so preoccupied with their sexuality, they were so preoccupied with being pure that if they weren't pure, if they, if they had sex before marriage or even did other very, you know, insignificant things, um, they would feel very guilty. They would feel like something was wrong with them, that they had lost something of value. And so now looking back, we talk about how, you know, hindsight is 2020. A lot of people are looking back and saying, wow, we really taught things in a way that was very negative and, And we would want to do that differently. So I, I'm I'm a I'm very grateful that that conversation is ta taking place, and that so many people are uh, evaluating the ideas and the ways that those ideas were taught. So at that time, you used to had all the answers, and when I watched your documentary, I survived. I kissed dating goodbye. I better understand uh, your environment at that time and the changes uh, you've been through. Yeah, the documentary was a project that was really um, an important moment for me. It was while I was at graduate school. It was a project that I did with another student at the school. And it captured the journey of me talking to people who had been hurt by my book, talking to different writers and influencers and people who were looking back at purity culture and helped me to understand why I Kissed Dating Goodbye was so, so damaging and so harmful to so many people. So the documentary really was capturing and documenting that journey of change that was taking place in me in terms of my, my view of my own book. And at the end of the day, do you still carry this very special book in your bookshelf? <laughs> I have one copy uh, on my bookshelf. <laughs> I think it's, uh, it's one of the first copies that I, I received. And, um, but the, the book itself has been unpublished. Uh, my publisher very, graciously agreed to stop publishing the book and um, I've done my best to communicate to people my apology for ways that it uh, it harmed them. In fact, today you are using your experience in marketing and dealing with pressure to help others and if we combine Joshua Harris and this uh, passion, we get clear and loud. <laughs> Yes, that's the name of my, uh, my little marketing agency. And I think what was, um, was difficult for me when I stopped being a pastor and stopped being an author is that I had to ask the question, what, what do I do now? You know, I've used these, these gifts of communication for so long and I wasn't sure what to do. And, and what I realized is I love to help other people with their message. You know, so many people have trouble communicating the thing that's inside of them, the thing that they care so much about. Uh, they could be an individual or they could be a business that's trying to, to talk about their product or talk about their service. And it's very frustrating when you're not able to communicate in a way that's compelling and that draws people to you. And so with my company, Clear and Loud, I get to come alongside them and help them to clarify their message help them to find ways to connect with the story of the audience that they want to reach. And so we, you know, we write content, we build websites, we do videos, videos and video scripts and all these things. And it allows me to continue to be a part of this communication endeavor, which I think is um, one of the most amazing things. You know, you understand this because you, um, you get to talk with people all over the world and you love this work, right? Um, and I, I love that as well. I think there's something so powerful about communication. Get clarity, create content, amplify your message. <laughs> That's right. Well, I really, I really like the, the name of our company. You know, there's a, there's a phrase that we use, um, in English, loud and clear. You know, I hear you loud and clear. 
And I said, no, we, sh- we need to switch the order of those. And instead of starting with being loud, we should start with being clear. Because it's only when you really understand who you are and, the, and can simply communicate what your company is about that you can then be loud and you can go out and advertise and build websites and do all these different kinds of things that are so important. But we always start with clarity. And does your clients and the company uh, you're working with knows your past and your books and your uh, former pastor's career? Oh, that's a good, <laughs> that's a really good question. A lot of times they don't and that, that issue never really comes up. But sometimes they'll Google me and they'll kind of come, you know, to a strategy call and be like, you know, I read about you <laughs> and I found out about this. Um, and actually, you know, I, I have gone through lots of different changes in my life. And one of the big changes I've gone through is that I no longer, um, identify as the same kind of Christian that I used to be. You know, I, I, I'm in transition. I'm not sure all that I believe, but for some people, that's, that's very upsetting to them that I'm no, no longer calling myself a, a Christian. But I recently did um, a big work project for a church. They hired our company to redo their website, do all their branding, all this kind of thing. And um, they called me separately and they said, hey, we just want you to know, we know your whole story. <laughs> we know everything you've been through. We know that you don't say you're a Christian anymore, but we still love you and we want you to do this work and we respect you so much. And that really meant a lot to me. That was very, that was very heartwarming to me. So basically, Joshua Harris, how many people are working with you? You have a sort of office in Vancouver. Right. Yeah, so today I'm just at my, my home office, but um, I have a team that is that works remotely all over, um, all over North America. So I have an a, a incredible project manager and we kind of run the show, but then we have writers and designers and illustrators and videographers that are all over uh, North America and that we bring into specific projects. So it's, it's great. We have a wonderful team of people at Clear and Loud. And I saw that on the wall of your office, or maybe it was an open space, yeah. um, you have walls where we can wrote on the, on them. Oh, yeah. And for example, recently, uh, to make the design of the coaching website. Oh, that's right. Oh, you're very observant. I love that you, uh, I love that you noticed that. Yeah, so a, a new part of the work that I'm doing is working with individuals uh, who want to communicate a message. So I call my coaching message clarity coaching. And these are people who are processing their own story and their own journey. And they have, they have something inside them. They, they want to write a book or they want to give a speech or, or maybe they're transitioning in their career in some way. And they're asking the question, how does my, my past experience translate into my new focus? And how do I talk about that with other people? And how do I position myself? Because as you know, with social media, there are so many voices, right? There are so many, you know, platforms and people communicating. And so it's important to really be able to own your voice and be able to clearly articulate your message and know who you're, you're talking to. So a lot of the principles that I use with, in my company with business, in marketing, I bring into my coaching for individuals. So this is for thought leaders and authors and uh, people who have a message to share. And I take them through an eight-week course that helps them to align their own story with their message and the people they want to reach. And it's really powerful. It's a it's a very fun process. And I, I love that kind of uh, one-to-one connection with people. And I also believe, Joshua Harris, that part of your job is to simplify because sometimes, you know, the most memorable uh, motto and slogan are the easiest one to remember. That's very true. Yeah, I think that it's simplicity, someone said, is the ultimate sophistication. And I think that's true in, um, in fashion. I think it's true in design. And I think it's especially true when it comes to our message. Oftentimes people load up so many words or they think they need to say a lot and they're not necessarily being clear. They're not being simple. And so I help people get to the, the beautiful simplicity of their message so that people can quickly understand it and can pass that on to other people. I would actually, do you mind if I ask you a question? Sure. I'm wondering how you would, uh, you would explain 
what you do and why you do it with your podcasts and your videos? So my ultimate goal is to reach the United States in a few years. Uh, because I'm studying in Montreal right now. So I started this podcast, VH Berries, to uh, improve my English. And since the beginning of 2021, um, I started talking with personalities like you, Joshua Harris, um, personalities that are on the places that I want to be, you know. So this is a sort of way for me to stay connected to my goals. Oh, I love that vision. And it's an amazing way to, to make friendships in, in these different areas as well. That's so beautiful. Exactly. And if I can uh, make a connection with your former pastor's life and today, I saw that you're still unsure uh, on the board of your website to where to put the email boxes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you, you, what, uh, what part of the website are you talking about? Because I saw, um, yesterday where we were, uh, on video calls that, um, between two parentheses, you put the word unsure. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah. That's a good, uh, that's a good metaphor for much of my life. I feel like I am, I am learning and I'm growing and I feel like I don't have to have all the answers, but I, I need to figure that one out real soon. So I'll have to, I'll have to figure out that email issue quickly. <laughs> Thank you, Joshua Harris. Goodbye. Thanks so much for the conversation, Victor. I appreciate it. Great. I said goodbye like the book, you know. That's why. <laughs>